Is my tongue red? I just had a cough drop. Okay. Hey guys, so today I'm gonna be doing a story time. So basically I'm gonna do a story time about how I found out I had cancer. <laughs> okay. So <coughs> I sound like really sick kind of sort of not really but I had a cough for such a long time and I can't get rid of it so and I might look a little bit different because I got braids and I really like them they're so cute um they hurt really bad when I first got them because like I was bald forever and then my hair was so short so I couldn't really like pull it back or anything so I didn't do anything like that so Basically, how should I start this? Hell no. Okay, so basically, okay, I should turn my music off because I'm just gonna want to listen to it and jam out. Okay, so basically, this started when my summer going into my junior year. So. I was 16 yeah so I was 16 and my grandma lives in Ecuador so we went to go visit her um, for the whole month of August so basically we get to Ecuador and like we we're driving home from a lunch or a dinner I think it was lunch or an early dinner and we are driving home back to our house and all of a sudden I feel this weird pain in my neck and like this it just hurts so bad and then I went to feel it because I felt pain and I was like what's going on like let me see what's wrong with it so then oh my god yeah I'm wearing my children's hospital Philadelphia shirt I mean jacket so basically I felt my neck and then I felt a lump so then I was like freaking out I was like mom like I have a lump right here and it mind you we were going to be there for the whole month of August and we had just gotten there and it was like the second or third day we got there so I was freaking out because I'm in Ecuador and like America like is different way way better so sorry grandma way better than Ecuador so I was just kind of scared because I was like, oh, like I'm in a third world world, a third world country and I have like this lump on my neck. So then, so basically I, and like it all of a sudden just started hurting. Like I never felt it before. Like I all of a sudden started, started hurting and then I felt the lump. So then we get back to her house finally and my mom gives me like ibuprofen or Tylenol or something and I go and I took a nap and I really like couldn't really fall asleep so I was just laying in bed listening to music like with my eyes closed trying to fall asleep even though I couldn't so then fast forward to the next morning um my grandma has this garden in her um yard in the front she's got this, like all these trees she has like a lemon tree a tomato tree um so basically she has a, this huge garden with all like vegetables and fruits and flowers and it's so pretty so she was watering her garden and um her friend her neighbor across the street, oh my grandma just talking to me, her neighbor across the street, her son was visiting her and her son is a doctor in New York. So basically, um, my grandma was like, oh, can you have your son look at my granddaughter because she has a uh, lump on her neck. So then that night he came over and he had like all like his doctor stuff like a stethoscope and like all that stuff and so basically like felt my neck and all this and then 
over there since it's not America um you can get penicillin over there for like like right you could just be like oh I need penicillin and they'll give you some penicillin um so basically after that we went because he just thought I had strep throat um so then basically we went over him my mom and I and we went to the pharmacy and we got penicillin and I was on that but it wasn't helping at all and so then fast forward we take like a mini trip when we're in Ecuador we go to I want to say Guayaquil I think it was Guayaquil I don't remember I think it was Guayaquil so we went to Guayaquil and there's a doctor in the hospital we're staying at that is like the hospital doctor so basically we go and to the front desk and my grandma because they speak Spanish and we don't speak Spanish so basically she went over to the front desk and was like hey can I set up like an appointment I guess and so basically there were two men doctors like one was a doctor one was like a nurse I guess or it's assistant so then basically they came to our room and they checked my neck and then they were talking in Spanish going back and forth with my grandma and me and my mom had no idea what they were saying so then my grandma my mom was like come on like tell us what's going on and so then like they wanted to take a sample of my neck or cut my neck open and my mom started like freaking out she was like no we can't do that here like I don't want to do that here because it's a third world country like and once again it's not America so basically that didn't really do anything so I just like kept taking ibuprofen or Tylenol or Advil or something and it would still hurt like it really couldn't nothing would help it so flash forward flash fast forward fast forward <laughs> to when we get home um to New Jersey we got home at like one something in the morning I think I don't know yeah so then then so then we ended up going we came home and we went to sleep and then the next morning um once my mom and I both woke up she took me to the emergency room to like see what was going on because we're finally back in um America so then basically we go to the emergency room and they do blood tests on me and I think they did an ultrasound this time at that appointment and so basically they just run a whole bunch of tests and my blood was completely normal like all the like none of my numbers were like great like outrageous or something to be concerned about and um none of the tests were showing up anything and there's something called cat scratch and I have two cats and so anyway they thought that I could have had cat scratch but my cats are declawed so I knew I didn't have cat scratch but they just thought I did so basically they I'm not really sure what they put me on, but they put me on some type of medicine to try and see if that would help it. And they also just, they basically just said my body's fighting an infection and my lymph nodes, because that was like, they thought it was my lymph nodes. So they basically were just saying your body's fighting an infection and you just have to wait for it to heal or your body to get better and stop fighting. So probably like another week later maybe not even like probably a couple days later we go back to the emergency room because nothing's helping and oh no 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 we went to my regular doctor but they I think it was the same thing like they just said my body's fighting an infection um just you have to wait and like figure out what's going on and just wait to see if it will like clear up sort of kind of so then next time I go to the emergency room it's this weird doctor and he basically said the same thing everyone was saying the same thing I went to the emergency room like three or four times and they were all trying to put me on some weird random ass medication 
and just say that my body's fighting an infection and um like it's nothing that they could do about it or something like like they don't know exactly what is going on so they were just like your body's fighting an infection so and all like once again like all of my numbers and testing and stuff came back normal so then my mom called my sister's ear nose and throat doctor that she had a while ago and so she made an appointment with him and I think that oh so mind you this appointment I got back the end of August and we're into October now like September nothing was going on like they just kept saying you have an infection you have an infection and then October same thing like we went back to the emergency room and like they were just saying the same exact thing every time um so then um we're in October I want to say my doctor's appointment with the ear nose and throat doctor was I want to say it was like October 29th I think I think I don't know so we went in there and he was like okay he was he was amazing like he drew pictures and of like the head and like the neck and he showed where you have lymph nodes you have lymph nodes in your neck you have some like here and you have some in your armpits and you have some in your groin and so basically he didn't want to put me on anything he just said we need to take a biopsy of this so he was just like really quick to the point I loved him and he was amazing so then we go and we schedule the biopsy for November 2nd so um and that was like my first surgery yeah hmm. yeah that was my first surgery besides my wisdom teeth but um yeah wisdom teeth isn't really surgery but so that was basically my first surgery and um I was really nervous for it and yeah so anyway they took a biopsy of my neck I don't know if you can see it let me like let's see right here is like my scar so they took a biopsy of my neck ah uh, now i'm gonna have trouble like putting that back up okay so they took a biopsy of my neck and then uh i'll put some pictures in say hi dad hi dad bring me some these are so good November 6th I just remember because my mom's birthday is November 7th and November 6th I get out of school at 2 30 and so I am walking to my mom's car and I just see her on the phone and then um I'm walk like I, I'm walking to her car and I'm like getting in and then all of a sudden she like not all of a sudden but she like was done her phone call and then basically she told me that I had um Hodgkin's lymphoma and I was like what is that and so then she told me and then I immediately started crying because I was like oh my god I'm gonna have to get chemo and I'm gonna lose my hair so then I was extremely sad and and like it was right as soon as I got into the car like so I was still at school basically and I didn't want anyone to see me so I was like crouched down um like my head to my knees in the car so no one could see and then we went and we got some coffee from Dunkin Donuts so then basically I was miserable for the rest of the day and then I FaceTimed my friend Caroline and told her and she was so sad and yeah and then what happened for, so then from there I got forwarded to my favorite place Children's Hospital of Philadelphia <coughs> 
Um, but I live in New Jersey, so there's a children's hospital, a Philadelphia clinic in, it's like 10 minutes away from my house. So I ended up going there instead of the main campus. So we go there. I'm not really sure what day this is, but um, it's still November. We go there. Yeah, it's still November. Yeah. Okay, so anyway, we go there and I get to meet the doctor, Dr. Batra. Um, and I also met a social worker. And basically they just were talking to me about stuff and well, I wasn't really paying attention. I was kind of just like zoned out and my mom was just like talking to them. And then the social worker was like, what's one thing you think of when you hear of like cancer? And she was waiting for me to say death or die. And I said hair because I was obsessed with my hair. It was so long and I loved it. And like, it was my favorite thing in the whole world. Like in the morning I dreaded doing my hair, but then I was like, oh my God, like it looks so good. Um, so basically I, I told her hair and she laughed a little, but not really. Cause I don't know. I don't know why, but so then she was like, really? And I was like, yeah, why? And she was like, because most, most kids say like they die or death or something, something along the words of dying. And I was like, oh no, like I'm, I was just like so sad about my hair. So then I meet some of the nurses, nurse Karen, I met her and this was before I decided to get a port. Um, yeah, so then she had me sit in one of the chairs and see like what if I had veins like good veins or not and I have good veins because they're just good and um yeah so then she did that and then I ended up getting a port and I'll show you that that's this scar and like they did it I don't know if you're gonna be able to, yeah like here and I have a scar here they are supposed to like go through one of your neck veins um i was trying to make it appear but i can't okay um so oh so basically i ended up wanting to get a port because i like it will like the chemo ruins your veins and stuff so it would just be way less harmful even though it's still very harmful on your body but it would just be a little less on my veins so then we get forwarded to Dr. Schaefer. Wait, no, I don't even know his Dr. Schaefer. Um, and my ear, nose, and throat doctor, his name was Dr. Schaefer too. So there were two Dr. Schaefers. But this one um, put my port in. And so basically they went to put the, it's like, it's the, uh, I have to put in a picture of one. But anyway, the port is like a little circle thing and it has a line attached to it, like a little um, cord. And so the port sits here and it can, they like put it up through one of your neck veins, but my neck vein was, there's two ways to do it. The first way is they put it through your neck vein and that's like the first way, like they would prefer to do it. But they went to do it, and my neck vein, of course, was too small. So then they had to cut again, like, somewhere else. And then they had to put it in through the a second way, like, some weird way or something, like he was explaining to me. And so, and then I got my port. And so, basically, then I started getting chemo, and yeah, so then, yep. Yeah. That's just going to be the part one. I'll make a part two about like, like, um, hmm, I'll just make a part two. Part two coming soon. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed the story time part one of my cancer journey experience slash how I found out slash how I'm handling it or how I handled it. 
So stay tuned for part two. There might even be a part three, but there will definitely be a part two. So stay tuned for that because it'll be really good.